So the topic on your gut microbiome, those trillions of tiny residents in your gut and their connections with our mental health have been blowing up lately on the internet. I really love this question. Since I started improving my gut health, my bloating has decreased a lot. Yes, bloating is totally normal, but I used to wake up like super bloated on an empty stomach. It was very painful and it was like really consistent too. Next thing I noticed is I no longer have that like swollen puppy look in my face. These two pictures are a year apart. Something else I've noticed is my hair is a lot healthier and stronger and it's growing like really quickly. My digestion has improved. I now have consistent bowel movements. I now have a lot more energy. I don't rely on naps to get me through the day. My anxiety has decreased and overall I just have like better moods. And most I started drinking cranberry juice every day, not for a UTI, but for my gut health, because I had a doctor on my podcast who said that getting red pigments in your diet is the most important thing you can do for your gut bacteria. These are lemon and ginger shots that I prep and store in the freezer and drink every morning when I wake up. Adding ginger to your diet is a great way to naturally support a healthy gut and efficient digestion. All you have to do is blend ginger and lemon, freeze in an ice cube tray, and add it to a glass of warm water in the morning. Get the full recipe in the caption. So what is this all about? Well, it turns out the connection is very much true. This is called a microbiota gut-brain axis, which is a link between your gut and your brain, especially affected in depression. We know that our brain controls our gut by controlling how fast your gut moves, how much and what hormones to secrete, how much acid and mucus to produce, but it turns out our gut can also control our brain. To explain, first meet the residents of our gut. The five main groups of immigrants in our gut are Bacteroides, Firmicutes, Actinobacteria, Fusobacteria, and Protobacteria. Among them, Bacteroides and Firmicutes are the majority, and these happen to be the one most affected in depression, and can even lead to IBS when the microbiome is disrupted. There's even an experiment to prove this. Dr. Kelly and their team showed that transplanting poop from depressed patients into mice can actually generate depression-like behaviors in these mice. Now imagine Joe, who loves processed food, sugary drinks, and forgets the fibers. This leaves his gut microbiome imbalanced, with bad bacteria crossing the border, now thriving with resources from high sugar and simple carbs and the old residents now struggling to compete for resources. These bad guys can now talk to his brain through chemicals, sending signals that contribute to inflammation and low mood. Now Joe gets even more anxious, more stressed, and down. And then he eats more junk food to relieve his stress, causing more inflammation and so on. Now meet Don, who watched this video and learned to eat a very balanced breakfast with berries and yogurt, plenty of fibers from quinoa and veggies throughout the day lots of healthy oily fish and lean meat with fermented food like kefir and kimchi. These all work together to feed the good bacteria who now send different signals to his brain to promote well-being and resilience. Don feels calm, happy, and optimistic. Now, does that mean Joe is screwed? Well, he still has a chance. There are several options. The classic way is to take antidepressants like SSRI, Zoloft, Prozac, and then therapy and try to change the neurochemistry. But currently, he's now got new options underway, including changing his diet, taking prebiotics, and even poop transplant, all with the purpose of bringing the gut microbiome balance back. There is a pilot study that showed a group of people changing from their predominantly Western diet to vegetarian, Mediterranean, and ketogenic diet that led to change in calorie and fiber intake. And after they did that, they saw a huge change in the measure of anxiety, well-being, and happiness. A huge correlation between the greater consumption of fat and protein is found with lower level of anxiety and depression. While if you consume higher percentages of carbs, that was associated with much more stress, anxiety, and depression. What are some gut-healthy ingredients you can add to your diet today? Other than the obvious vegetables and fruits, Lots and lots of fibers from quinoa, hemp seeds, chia seeds, lots of healthy oil from avocado, salmon, black cod, lots of lean protein from poultry, mushroom, soy products. If you like spice, garlic, ginger, turmeric, these are excellent. If you like sweets, dark chocolate is your best friend for your gut health and antioxidants. Remember, it's not just about the number of bacteria, but the balance between the good and the bad. By making healthy food choices, you can support the good bacteria keep the bad ones in check, and ultimately improve your mood and mental well-being.